Hello and welcome to another Trimble RealWorks video tutorial. This is Joshua Van Diver with Allen Instruments, and today we're going to focus on utilizing the Easy Profile tool as well as a copy tool for topographic surveys. The data that we're looking at here is of a Dave and Buster's in San Diego, California, and from end to end we have well over 500 feet of data. The data was collected with eight station setups in under 40 minutes utilizing medium resolution four minute scans. But today what we're going to focus on is just the ground surface itself. And for that, we can use our segmentation tool to grab an area of the point cloud that we're interested in. And I've already created one segmentation here and I labeled it ground. So we'll go to view just the ground surface. Then we'll take a look over our area of interest, which we want to collect this curb and gutter information back here, along with the lane striping. So I'll get a nice overhead view and go from perspective to a parallel view, and then just fence out an area that I want to work with with my segmentation tool again. So I'll simply grab an area that will include the curb and gutter, and some of this lane information that I want as well too. Check that in, create the object, and close the tool. Now I'm just viewing the area of interest that I want to create my brake lines on. So from here we can open up the Easy Profile tool, and once this loads, we will determine how we want to cut and slice the point cloud with our cutting plane tool. So within the cutting plane tool, I'm going to define a cutting plane that's actually going to run through the point cloud vertically. And then it'll give us this cross section slice here and we can view and move by utilizing this toggle bar to navigate through the point cloud so we get in view that we like to create our template. So from here, to create that template, we go to the 2D Easy Line tool. And as you can see from the cutting plane tool, everything here is fairly easy to follow along in a step-by-step -step wizard driven manner. So now we're on step three with the Easy Line tool. We'll go here and then go to our polyline drawing tool. Since we already have our our threshold created. We can increase or decrease the th thickness of the threshold here. We want to keep our point cloud displayed on, obviously. And then now in step two, we simply go to the polyline drawing tool. So now that we're in our drawing tool, we simply draw our template for the back of curb, top of curb, flow line, and the edge of pan or edge of gutter. Right click and then end our line close the tool out, and then hit apply. So now you'll see in yellow, the template has been created for the entire curb and gutter. So we can hit create. And now it's going to show us in red what that template looks like. So from here, we can change the step size of the template itself, we can go down from three to one foot, or maybe all the way up to five feet, whichever user-defined interval you prefer. When we're happy with our interval, we can hit start. And in real time, I'm not going to fast forward this video. We can see that it's actually growing our curb and gutter brake lines through the point cloud based off the template that we have just created. And just like that, the brake line has been created. So we can go through here now and examine the data more thoroughly before we hit create and close. So we want to go from a perspective mode instead of parallel, which will give us a easier view to examine the data. 
to let us know that they are in fact in the correct location. And go all the way down from end to end just to examine the data. So from here, now that we've visually inspected our work, we can hit create and then we can close out of this tool. And now you'll see that we have our brake lines and our curb and gutter. So we can call up the original point cloud and more thoroughly inspect the brake lines. And if you want at any point as well, you can of course switch from true color to color coded intensity mapping as well, which will now highlight the face of the curb in yellow compared to the rest of the point cloud ground elevation. So this is just a great way to examine the data before moving on to your next step. So from here, if you wanted to continue these lines, we can go back to our true color, call out our drawing tools. From here, as I hover over the end of a line, a yellow dot or a star appear on the edge of the line. So I know that I'm actually connecting it to that. That star will appear again when I'm hovering over point cloud information as well too. So that will eliminate the possibility of drawing on areas where there aren't any accurate point clouds to draw on. So from here, as you can see, I'm in the straight line mode. And I will come down to my curb and gutter. And I will get as close to the edge here and then simply come up to our three point arc mode and select a point close to the middle, close to the end of the arc, and then go back to our straight line mode. And then again, go back to our 3D arc mode, get a view more adjacent to the screen to make sure that we are selecting the appropriate location on the point cloud and then end the line. And it will be the same process for these other brake lines here as well too. And now what we want to do is focus just on these lane stripes here. So I'm now going to get a view just of this object here. I'm going to close out of the current drawing tool. I'm going to open up my drawing tool once more to create a new 3D plane by selecting three points on this area that I want to work within. And as I move my third point over the point cloud, I can see where my drawing plane or drawing canvas is going to be located within the point cloud. So I can select that, check it in, and then I can zoom in to my drawing surface. Now, if I'm focusing on one of these lane stripes here, Again, I have the option of different views, so I can go into my color-coded intensity mapping or back to my colors from true colors and then draw triangles defining two points. So I'm going to simply draw one of these lane stripes here. So from here, I'm going to turn off the point cloud and actually select the lane stripe that I want, then turn the point cloud back on and now I can simply move this if I want to or leave it in its current location and go to a copy mode and now copy and move this to the next location. Copy again and move to the next location. Copy again. Slide down your point cloud. Again, this is the uh, advantage of utilizing different viewing modes for your point cloud because now you can go to true color again to actually see these other lane stripes that may be difficult to view through color coded intensity mapping. So I'll just copy one more, slide it down and you get the point. We can create this object here and move on. So once you create the object, now I simply come in here and turn on the entire point cloud to once again visually QAQC my work. 
So we can navigate through the point cloud. We can switch again to color coded intensity if you like. And just fly through the point cloud to QA, QC your work. And again, you can switch to what other, whatever viewing mode that you would like that you prefer to investigate your work. And as you fly through the point cloud to visually QA, QC your work, you can of course choose which other of the viewing options that you would like. So grayscale or go back to true color, for example. And then as you saw from the arc that I drew earlier, just simply repeated that same process for these arcs down here. And even though we're missing some data on the back side of this bullnose here, we're still able to use that arc tool to create an accurate representation of that bullnose. Once I've drawn my break lines, then I can come here to the point cloud and turn it off, select the objects that I would like to export and go to export selection. And these are the options that we have. So whether it's going to be a Land XML file, some LAS, E57, DWG, DXF, you have all the major platforms to export your work. So we'll cancel out of this, turn on the point cloud again. And this is creating topographic survey line work in Trimble RealWorks utilizing the Easy Profile tool and the Copy tool in RealWorks. This again was Joshua Van Diver with Allen Instruments. Thank you very much for your time today. Have a great day.